first thing you need to do is you want to make a center core so you can use core wool which is cheaper um, or you can use Shetland or white face woodland which is what this um, this is what I'm using now it, it needs to be sort of obviously it needs to be a circle but it doesn't need to be perfect so what I'm going to do take my basket up what I'm going to do is to firm up the center to save a lot of felting time I'm going to tie a knot in the center of this wool you can see there you go and I'm going to tie another knot as well so what you've got there is a nice center to work around in fact I could do another one on there I think you want to sort of get it as, do as many as you can really and then that way it takes a lot less time to felt and then take your wool wrap it round in one direction Take your felting needle and just start to poke it in just to secure it. This core that you're making does not need to be perfect. It's going to be covered with all those lovely colours, so it doesn't really matter about perfecting the shape at all. Well, it doesn't to me anyway, unless you're a perfectionist, then maybe you feel the need to have a perfect circle, but I will show you what we can do um, with our hands to improve the shape and then go so you've got this little tail hanging now so then wrap that round and just secure the end the tail at the other side just be careful with your fingers very sharp these needles now I'm using one needle which I use quite often uh, you can use, these are called tulip holders, that's got three needles in but you can take that down to two if you want. So if you want to just kind of get things felting a bit faster, you can use that. This is the one I normally use, it's got um, it's exactly the same thing, it's, it's got two needles in it. And because this isn't going to be seen, it doesn't matter about the needle marks but you can see how quickly that's firmed up and what a difference actually making those knots in the middle have made to how much time it takes now just to get this shape a little better I'm just going to roll it in our hands quite firmly if you're rolling a, I don't know, a bread roll for those of you that make bread and there you can see you've got a rough shape and that's that's okay. I did one earlier, um, that's a little bit bigger, so you know, you can do pumpkins, all shapes and sizes. So that's the center of this. I think I use brown wool for this one, but um, I've, I'm gonna use white for this one, because it's usually something that people have lying around, whether it be core wool or Shetland or, or whatever um, you're using. The wools that are in the autumn box are a mix of Shetland and Corydale. The Corydale, Corydale is ethically sourced. So um, I always check my suppliers. I always use um, family businesses wherever possible as well. And I know that this has come from a really good source. So um, a nice mix of colours there. Right, so we've got our, our ball ready. So we're going to pop that to one side. And then what we want to do is we want to make a cover to go around this. Now, many of you will just have the foam pads, which is absolutely fine because I use mine. I use, this is my rice bag. I use foam pads as well. So what you want to do is, um, we're gonna take our colors and I think we'll have, we'll have a little bit of mustard and some of the, Cinnamon, I think that will do, and we'll have, we'll have a little bit of the, the Logan Berry in there. We'll put a little bit more in. I think we'll need a bit more than that. And now, what you can either do is you can just really blend by hand. 
if you want to or if you're going to be making quite a few of them then you can actually use blending brushes either way is absolutely fine blending brushes are just quicker if you're, if you're going to be doing lots of them but it doesn't take long to, to do it by hand either but you can just see as you pull it off you get all those nice blends in So you've got a lovely kind of blend of colours there. You could go, you just use a mustard if you want, if you want to go just, you know, one colour, you know, orange or yellows or your rusts, but um, I, I really like blending um, the wools. Now at this point, you can either just roll it round like this and start to felt on which is pretty quick and easy and it needs to be quite loose because you want to get that fluffy fluffy sort of pumpkinness <laughs> when <laughs> when it's finished the other way you can um, actually blend your walls together, once they're blended and you want to flatten them, if you want to really speed up the process then this is what's called a, a punch tool and this one has got um, seven needles in, it's got a guard on as well so it's actually really good for kids, if you're, if you're teaching kids this is, this is a good tool to use, especially if you're doing big flat felted pieces, this is brilliant, uh, this is my go to tool for all my flat felted pieces, um, like uh, if I'm doing lots of bunny ears, rabbit, rabbit ears, I also use it for the flat part of felting the legs. I'll do another tutorial for that. But anyway, so but this works best on a rice pad, not so it works on the foam. Works absolutely fine on the foam. But I like to I like to use my rice pad. And then just gently peel that away and you see, cover up those see-through marks. And for the pumpkin, it just needs to be really loose. It doesn't need to be firm. And you've got all those lovely swirls of colours in there. And it doesn't matter if there's, there's gaps all adds to the overall finish well I think so anyway there so you could you could do that take the ball and just wrap that around the pumpkin lost my needle there it is so really gently on and don't worry if you think you've got loads because we can just pull it off we'll just get around this pumpkin and draw carefully with that needle I'm sorry if you can hear a droning in the background but it's as you all know it's been very hot it still is it is Wednesday no Thursday afternoon and the heat and humidity is back at us so all I'm doing is just pulling this round and you can see how fast it is don't be precious over it you need it to be quite fluffy because when you draw your lines to give it that pumpkin shape and you see here you need it to be quite soft I'm always going on about you know that felt needle felting a lot of things need to be firm on in this case it doesn't so we'll just go over here and see how we're, we're doing that. Kind of putting a little blankie. That's my daughter used to say when she was younger. Put a blankie on my dollies. I 
we've got quite a lot left there which we're not going to need but we've also got some gaps here which we can cover up so I'm just going to pull that off and just move that round as you can see I'm only using the one needle again I use lots of tools as long as you've got one needle you're okay when I'm flat felting though I have to use my punch tools or my um, felting pens just because it just speeds up everything or if I'm making brooches you get a really nice firm finish so you can see how that's coming along quite nicely so you've got a fit, little white patch there so what I'm just going to do is going to pull that off and just felt that over there gently and I think that's pretty simple you can if some people use the, the polystyrene balls I, I, I've never used them but um, I do know that the polystyrene tends to break up and, and I just like using wool I just like using wool I like it because you can create any shape you want you can correct mistakes doesn't really matter there aren't really any mistakes in needle felting happy accidents Okay, so that's pretty much it. And then I'm just gonna roll that again in my hands, the bread roll roll. And you can see that our pumpkin is now ready for us to put the lines on. Okay. Lines are really simple. What you do is you go from the center and all we're gonna do is draw a line with our needle all the way round so you're just making a little indentation around the wall and that is just giving you a guide as to where we're going to lay our um, Loganberry sort of coloured wool to give us those nice pumpkin stripes. So is that kind of in the middle? I think it might be. So do one there and then do one across the centre as well. You can also speed that up if you've got one of these or one of the tulip holders with just two on. You just go down like so. And just come underneath there. so you can see how that's starting now I'm going to do another two down each side but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a really thin length and I'm talking really thin you don't even have to twizzle it just lay it across the top and center of your pumpkin and just push it in with the needle. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then just take it round to the bottom. Okay, so that's your first one. Just pop it in there. And it can be as thin or as thick as you like. I think um, less is probably more in this case. So just thin, thin this one out a little bit. And don't worry if it's short, you just just add a little bit more on. So obviously look, I haven't I haven't done enough with that length there. So I'll just take a little bit more. Bring it round. So you're starting to define the pumpkin now. You can see these shapes. And because we left it quite soft, you've got quite a nice pillowy effect and if you've squashed 
part of it in you can actually you can actually pull the wool so there we go so that's our first section done and what we're going to do is we are going to go and draw our line again use my two you can also um sellotape two needles together which is quite good for this There, go down the middle. See what I'm doing? I'm trying not to look at the camera because I just know that I'm going to stab my fingers if I do that. And I'm trying to encourage people to get creative and not put them off. So we've got our line down the centre there again. So we're just going to take. And you, it's quite amazing how little wool you need. You can make dozens of pumpkins out of this pack or whatever it is you want to do them. These are also lovely colours for um, sort of autumn flower brooches. If you're doing seasonal decorations, um, these are great. You know, if you're looking sort of at an autumn decor theme, half a dozen of these in a bowl in the house just they look lovely which is probably where mine will end up and I'm not being precious about the lines being perfectly um, equally apart I'm not going to get the ruler out and start measuring them or the, the vernier calipers which my hubs probably would my daughter definitely would be measuring Okay, so we're going on the last line, what to create, so just go from the centre again, make your line down there, and down the other side. I love how all these colours just blend together, I love autumn, I love the autumn colours. I don't mind the summer but I'm not a hot weather person, doesn't sit well with me. Now we go, so ready for our last little piece, of this Loganberry colour. You don't have to use this colour, you can use whatever colour you want. You, you know, if you were, um, if you'd done an all, if you'd done just a, um, a mustard colour, then you could use the rust or the the orange, the cinnamony colour. So you could have a really nice variation going on. But you can see now already, how long has it been? 19 minutes, something like that. So in 19 minutes, we've got the bulk of that done, which is pretty good, I think. And you just see underneath. And I quite like this sort of loose, earthy look. I always do, I always have. Um, and then just push that wool into the centre, and there we have our lovely pumpkin shape. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to one side. So, what we've got here is we've got a, um, a little sort of stem and a little twiddly bit hanging off the edge of the pumpkin and then our greenery or foliage or whatever you wish to call it is um, just slightly tapering into the, the pumpkin so this is um, our forest green it's a really lovely vibrant green so what I'm going to do I'll put it on my phone I'm just going to fold it over And I am going to use my needle felting pen for this. So this kind of it just speeds up the process for the video, but easily done with one needle. But like I say, if you if you're doing a lot of these or if you're selling them, you might want to uh, treat 
treat yourself to a pen or some, some of the other tools. I'm keeping the ends loose here because I want these to sort of tendril down the side of the pumpkin. So just peel that off gently. And remember when you're going into your foam, it doesn't matter about the shape, don't worry about it, we're going to roll it in our hands. Just into the top of the foam, it shouldn't be pushing all the way in because you're your phone won't last as long as it should, and there's no need either. Another, the sound, it sounds like it's working better, but it's not. I can assure you. So we've got a really rough shape there. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to roll it. So we are rolling. Yep. So just push it into your pad. roll it around and then felt just so it holds keeping the the ends loose there turn it as you felt and I'm kind of this is going to be narrowed at the center so I shall show you what I'm going to do Right. Best tools are your hands when you're needle felting or, or any kind of sculpture obviously. But um, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the wool in the palm of our hand. We're going to keep those loose ends just out and we're going to roll really firmly. You'll feel that getting hot. And can you see straight away how that has firmed up? And you've got a little bit sticking out at the end. All you do Watch your fingers, is just poke it in. And then you've got a lovely stem that's going to sit on the top of your pumpkin, which we are going to do now. So this is how quick it is. I'll give it a little bit more of a roll. Just push that end in again. quite flat at the top because the pumpkin stalks do tend to be quite flat and then you can just actually roll in the centre there. Again, if you do that, you see how that narrows that particular section. And we'll just pull a few of these strands off. And what we're going to do is we're going to sit that on top of the pumpkin, but what we're going to do is we're going to just pull all these loose bits out because we kind of want them to spread around in a circle so we want them to sit like so right. and then take your needle and where these loose bits start push those into the center of your pumpkin so that this stalk sits nicely on and then you can just pull these round. You can pull them off if they're a bit long. And you can just felt them in as well. So if you just want to pull a few down, felt them in, pull them down with your, with your needle. See there, you just catch it. Catch it there. Put it in, catch it there. And I really like that. And if you've got too much here, which I've got quite a bit, a bit too much here, then just push that under the stalk into the centre and it soon disappears. And then pull these down. And then what you can do, you can actually just bend that over. That's the great thing about wool, is how pliable it is. And just fold it in half and felt through that bend and it gives you that nice little kink in it. And I just think that's looking so cute. So the last thing I do, which you don't have to, but I think it's quite cute, um, just use a pencil and take a longish thin piece of greenery, just roll it in your hands, just to sort of mesh it together a little bit. 
and then I just wrap it around a pencil, a chopstick, anything will do. Just wrap it around like that. And then just, just wrap it around your pencil and then just pull it around with your fingers and what you're doing is you're meshing it together, you're creating a kind of kink in it. It won't create a, a proper circle as such but you're creating a nice kink. If you wet felted this on here and then let it, dry, let it dry, then that would stay nice and curly. So you could dip that in some hot water, soap water, and then really rub round and then just leave it to dry or use a hairdryer. But I'm just going to pull it off the end. And that actually worked quite, quite okay actually. Just going to pop that on again. I'll pull a bit off because it might be a bit long actually. There we go. Pull it around there and then just twizzle around really firmly with your fingers and then just pull it off. And you've got a little, little bit on the end there. And then just attach that somewhere onto your pumpkin where you've just popped the stem, push that excess wool where the end is in and there you have a lovely little pumpkin. <laughs>